Right, guys, I am here with Bob Heckman, producer, director, uh, film fan, and we are here to talk about one of my childhood favourites and, to be honest, adulthood favourites as well, um, Police Academy. We are currently just a couple of days shy of it, when this is being recorded, of it being the 40th anniversary of the first film, which is really cool. Um, I've just done a watch from seven back down to one. I've talked to Bob about it and we had a really good time chatting online. So we thought let's translate that into uh, an interview, a discussion, because I have a feeling that Bob has lots of cool things to tell us about um, Police Academy. So Bob, thank you again for, for coming on the channel. I really appreciate it. It's an absolute pleasure. I, I'll, I could speak about Police Academy every day if, uh, <laughs> if people were interested. So. Many, many conversations about many, Police many, Academy. Very, very, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so cool. It's so cool to, to speak to a fellow fan. Um, I know there are many. Oh, every time I say many now, I'm going to. Yeah, there are many fans um, of Police Academy. Um, where does your love of the series begin? Oh, man, that's so cool. I remember last time I spoke to you, you were, tell you were showing me your, I think you had Zed. And I was like, oh, so oh, jealous because yeah. I, I always wanted Zed. Oh, it's man. Toy. And his pants Gene, fall down. Gene, Gene, film machine. <laughs> <laughs> so good. So good. Um, uh, so so where does this all stem from? What's your um, your your relationship with Police Academy? Where did it start? Uh, it must have started uh, probably around when I was, I guess, nine or ten. And I had seen um, a couple of them on TV, either at a cousin's house or friend's house. Uh, and I believe it was like part two or three that were on either cable. I mean, HBO like ran them constantly, like like after school, because they were like PG, like part two and three. Two is mm. 13, but... I would see two and three constantly on TV. Uh, and then I remember recording on VHS uh, the first movie, which was on regular TV and, you know, edited for content. Yeah, I was going to say you would have been a little bit shocked like I was when, because um, I watched three first uh, mm -hmm. when I was being like a babysitter's house and um, I was I was blown away by it. But then when I watched the first one, I was like, oh, boobs. Like, what's going on here? This is well, different. You know, I didn't get a chance to see, you know, boobs or uh, and because it was <laughs> on TV. So they cut all that stuff out. Uh, yeah, uh, in of course. fact, there were there are moments that are completely cut out of the movie on the TV version, uh, mm. like with the commandant and the podium scene and stuff like that. Yes. So I didn't get to see the rated R version until I bought the VHS. Right. Um, you know, like a couple of years later, probably after like I had seen the fourth one. Uh, the fourth one is the only one I seen in the theater. Uh, right. I think, I yeah, six was it. the first, the only one I saw in the theater. Yeah. The same with you. It's the only one. Yeah. Uh, just no, just number six, just the sixth oh, one. Number six. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I remember I, I, had asked my dad to bring me to go see uh, Citizens on Patrol, yeah, in the theater, and I was loving every second of it. It's a good one um, to see. And for some reason, I didn't get to see five or six in the theater. And um, but I loved it. I I mean, I I I, I loved it. Uh, so. I think when the fifth one came out on video, like I had bought them on VHS mm -hmm. when I could and probably all at once when they were all out after the fourth one was released. And then I just bought all of them. Uh, I remember, I remember, I don't know why it's such a clear memory of buying the fifth movie at Sam Goody, which was like a big uh, yeah record store here. Um, yeah, I just remember buying the fifth oh, movie. It's um, it's a really cool box. Almost. 
and colour and colour to it that the fifth one. Um, I had them all on the big box VHS because I went. To, I used to go to this thing near our house where they'd sell X rental um, VHS. So I think other than six, which I had, I got for Christmas and got like a retail copy. All of the others I got in the big the big boxes. So obviously my my shelf looked like that, and then a big dip down to the sixth one. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, yeah it's... we didn't have those big boxes. I, I've seen those big boxes online of like what they look like. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I kind of wish I still had them. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I have all seven on VHS sitting over there. They're not my okay. original copies. No, no, that's it. Sadly, a lot of these things um, probably went to landfill, and then as an adult, you re you buy, you want to buy buy them all back, which is I'm in the process of doing that actually with with the VHS. Even though when I watched them the other day, I watched the box set, the the sort of the vanilla one, the yellow one, where it's just all, just the films, really. Mm -hmm. um, and I think one of the things about it, watching it backwards, was I noticed that change from film to... <laughs> I don't know why I did that, but I was like, well, I know what's going to happen. There's not going to be any surprises, so... Right. <laughs> um, you see the cast growing as it goes back to one, Yeah, know? exactly, yeah. Um, like starting off with Charlie Scatler and Claire Falani and like just a few of the originals. And then, do you know, I don't know how you feel about this one, but this is a bit of a strange thing to say, but I, I didn't mind any of the changes. I don't mind Mauser and uh, Harris, and I don't mind different changes of characters, people coming and going. But one thing that I found, I find it really hard to gel with Nick Lassard. <laughs> oh, Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, the nephew, Nick. Yeah, uh, I, 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 I'm sure Matt McCoy is a lovely gentleman, but I, I just found it really, really hard to, to. As a kid, I was just irrationally upset by him, which makes no part, no sense whatsoever. I guess it tells you how strong the Mahoney character is and how important he was to the series. Yeah, I mean, obviously, he was introduced to be like the straight man, like uh, Mahoney type character. Um, I like that he doesn't come out of nowhere. You know, it's it's yes. just kind of like, all right, it's the commandant's nephew, uh, in Florida. And it's like, all right, uh, and then he just yeah. kind of, I guess, goes back. <laughs> to Sard's, uh, he's there. Yeah, he's yeah, there. Yeah, he's yeah. there. He's... Yeah. Um, I don't mind him that much. I, I guess because I'm so charmed by the rest of the cast that he just kind of yes. like just kind of falls in there like as this yeah, Mahoney it, it, knockoff character and I just I, for the most part I kind of ignore him. Um, yeah. He doesn't really it's a strange one, isn't it? It's a strange one because it's a very rare type of film where everybody remembers character names yeah. and there's it, 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 it's all even the carry on films which are absolutely beloved in the uk we remember the actors we go oh kenneth williams or sid james but in when you talk about police academy you go zed sweet chuck mahoney hooks tackleberry. hightower tackleberry the names just roll off the tongue right I, I i don't can't think of any ensemble where there's so many characters <laughs> using the many again but so many characters that are easy to remember and, and hilarious. Like, they all add to it so much. Yeah, I mean, they're all so well-defined in that first film. Um, mm. You know, they, they they all have just their own personality. They all stand out. It's probably... I mean, the names also um, get repeated by other characters like true watching this time watching them all this time around i realized how many times like somebody's saying tackleberry hooks you know, and they're, you know like, <laughs> yeah they're, they're saying it yeah. very loud very clear and it's like halfway through the movie you 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 remember every single name high tower yeah. is easy because he's a big guy he's high yeah so it's high like, like, a tower. Yeah, like a tower you know so it's like <laughs> Like it's it's almost like subliminal, you know. Like it, yeah, yeah, very clever, um, very clever way of doing it. I was going to talk to you about like things that you brought along the way in terms of merchandise and things like that. So, has your fandoms never really dropped since being a child? You've always kind of returned to this series. Why do you think that is? Why do you why do you con constantly come back to it? Uh, I just it's my favorite comedy franchise. I I I just 
it even if I'm down for some reason, like I am all smiles when I watch these movies. I am I'm just smiling from beginning to end for 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 most of them, I should say. Yeah. Um <laughs> I I just I just find the characters so charming and funny and like they were all such good actors and yeah I'm just yeah. immersed in that wa- that world immediately and I probably watch the movies like if not every year every other year mm. um sometimes I stop at 6 and uh <laughs> um yeah. And just kind of forget about that last one, but then it's like, funny. I, 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 when I watched it, I'd forgotten that Claire Falani was in it, and it was one of her early roles. Oh and she's beautiful, and so, and she's actually really good in it. She's one of the one of the few bright spots of the film. She's always got this um, otherworldliness and dif- distance and unobtainability uh, in all yeah. of her films that she went on to do. But like, she's 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 really good in it. Um, Obviously, Lassard's great in it as well, but you know, yeah, yeah, the little Lassard side story with yeah. him with the uh, grieving family is just <laughs> so bizarre. And then he just like saves the day at the end. I forgot about that. That he, like, yeah, true. He, he, that that that's he, a, a very less. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, of course. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's 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 like um, is... beware of Tetris. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my god! They, and they they, they held no like no shame about it just being a game of nintendo game boy it's like what yes you couldn't even like like make it a different color or like put some weird contraption on there with a big like like russian flag on or something yeah they like, just like, what? don't give a shit at this point game boy like what the hell but getting back to claire Frelani, i mean yeah she was like distractingly gorgeous like watching it this time around i was just like you're right she's really good in it unfortunately it's not a good movie (laughs) but like i was like oh my god she has like this like seductive look on her face the entire time and maybe it's my imagination but i was just like (laughs) no i don't think it is Uh, she's good and it's kind of like i wish the you know, like like those moments are sweet with him, with her and Charlie. Yeah, it's just you know, it's it's everything else that's just so off. In that yeah, we're running out of steam at this point. Um, uh, what are your thoughts on the TV show? I remember watching it. I can't remember much about it. I know Lassard popped up, Jones popped up, um, but I, I don't remember much about it. Yeah, I I that aired in ninety seven. Um. I mean, I, I remember just the. I think it aired like either on TBS here that we have these odd cable channels like TBS and USA. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, I feel like whenever I did get a chance and watch it, I think I only watched like two or three episodes at the time it aired. And it was always like a Saturday morning, like 11 or noon. Like oh, that right, it came okay. on. Yeah, it wasn't like a a prime time show or anything. The, the more the yeah. better. I don't care. But like, uh, I ne- we never got the cartoon though. That was the thing I was always disappointed about. We oh. never got the cartoon. Um, what, what I know the figures that you had though, those are based off the cartoon. Is that right? Yeah, they're 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 all from the cartoon, and they're pretty good. Uh, they're pretty cool toys. Um, the cartoon I definitely seen a lot more of than mm-hmm. the live action show the live action show was almost like <sighs> um maybe i maybe in that time i wasn't that interested in it or something mm-hmm. like I, I i don't remember like or maybe it just aired at different times and i couldn't follow like when it was going to be on or but i remember seeing about two or three episodes and then it just kind of vanished and then yeah, I same. just kind of forgot about it, like the rest of the world. And I can't find them anywhere. I've tried uh, YouTube and Tubi and like Amazon and like all these channels that maybe you could find them, and it's not 
available anywhere except the pilot episode is on yeah. YouTube. And I, I watched it last night. Oh, I no way. It. So did I. Yeah. So did I. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you did too? Oh, my God. So yeah. I, yeah, I watched the pilot episode and, you know, it, it was, I was kind of groaning through half of it, but I mm. was, I was like, all right, well, this kind of, ha- this guy has potential and this is all right. And, yeah. You know, I, I'm like, I'm curious on seeing how this goes or if any of these characters you know have it wasn't as defined was it it wasn't as did the characters weren't as defined as when we just talked about the original film um it was harder to kind of pick out their traits or what they were and it made me think of um the when there was a big gap from the last carry on film to the carry on film that they made in the 90s carry on columbus and they put a lot of new up and coming comedians in it they had some of the older ones in it again, and it, it didn't hit right, and it was universally disliked. In fact, I have it. I actually literally got it here, Carry On Columbus. Um, <laughs> I've never even heard of that. that which is 19, 1992. Now, bearing in mind, I don't think we'd had um, a Carry On film maybe in the 80s, so it's a big gap. And it made me think about what a Police Academy 8 would look like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um... I don't know, but it it did seem a little forceful. Like they were trying to force these new personalities into the TV show, and it just it just doesn't work. And they were just like they were just pushing the slapstick like a little too much. And it's like yeah, by the mid to late nineties, is slapstick really like a thing that's funny anymore? It's like it it went into a different type of comedy. Yeah, um, yeah. But uh, but I did watch the cartoon series here and there. I didn't follow it, you know, religiously or anything. But um, mm-hmm. all of that is on YouTube. So I watched the first three episodes of that last night also. Um, so I'll probably continue with that and watch the rest of the cartoon series. So, so in terms of the original seven films... The only outlier for me is number four because I love it so much. I love Citizens on Patrol. I recorded that onto an audio tape so I could learn the rap when I was a kid. I had to get everybody to be quiet in the room so I could record it and learn it. Um, and, and the skateboarding and all that. That's so cool. It's one of the best pieces of artwork as well. Yeah, it's one of my, one of the one best of my favorite. Uh, Drew Struzan, you know. Drew Struzan, of course, Drew Struzan, yeah. the guy who did uh, Back to the Future, the Star Wars, yeah. Indiana Jones movies. Like, he did the Police Academy posters. Too. He's one of the best, one of He's the best, if the not best. the best. Yeah. I had a giant, uh, well, 27 by 40 poster of this on the back of my door growing up as a teenager. And nice. I loved it. Uh, I got it from the like local video store. And I was like, all right, if I'm going to have Police Academy cast members sign one of the posters, I'll have it be part four. And yeah, yeah. There's a lot of sentimental value with that because it, I had it as a kid. It was the only one I saw in the theater. Um, hmm. probably growing up, it was my favorite. It was just hilarious yeah. to me. It is really funny. It it stands out as probably the most laughs I would say, consistent laughs all the way through till to to the end. Really, even so there's some good laughs within the balloon chase part. So yeah, often yeah. when it gets to the set piece, then the laughs slow down a little bit. So even um, David Spade playing Bart Simpson pretty much in that film. <laughs> it's really <laughs> cool. Um, it, it, Arnie and Kyle. I always think it's really funny because like the, the, the dark haired kid looks about 40. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, Brian Backer. He, he was yeah. the last times at Ridgemont High. Yes, of course. Yeah, so he'd already been through the teen years and um, yeah. Uh, and and it, yeah, it's just it's just a really great one. So maybe that would be one I'd struggle to rank because all the others I would probably go in order. Um, what what would you do if you had to put them in order of preference? Because it, it, for me, it's I, a bit too tricky. I mean, I definitely have friends that fight me on this, but um, <laughs> the the first one is my favorite. I I love the first movie. Um, um, it's it's the introduction of all the characters they're so well defined there's there's so much heart in the movie mm. and you know that's not something you it's kind of like the first revenge of the nerds movie where like 
you kind of fall in love with these characters by the end. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and you, and you, you get to see the characters kind of come into their own and grow and like, like they're all like misfits and losers when they first start the Academy. But, you know, you see like hooks finds her voice, you know, at the end and she becomes more authoritative and like, um, uh, Leslie Barbara, the, the big guy, yeah which is always funny to me because like leslie Les- barbara it's, it's like his name is yeah. two like female names yeah yeah the, the names the name choice is so clever in all of the characters isn't it like we said before yeah like yeah and with with leslie barbara you, you see him getting bullied in the beginning then he joins the academy and you know he starts standing up for himself he stands up for mahoney at one point um you see hightower like uh get kicked out of the academy for standing up to hooks when yeah their relationship is amazing copeland like says the racist thing he does yeah man Um, and time stops there's there's, like moments where like you 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 see like a couple of them here and there like starting to become friends and support each other and like trying to get through the the uh you know the 14 weeks together or whatever and it's like and then you yeah. see at one point mahoney you know for the half the movie he's trying to get kicked out of the academy um but then you start seeing like oh he kind of wants to be there and he starts get, getting closer to the characters and you know and i just i just love how, hum, how there's so much heart in in it that i i can't not put that as my number one um uh, and, and even like the minor characters that like, um, or I should say like the characters that didn't stand out as much, like the uh, like the guy who's pretending to be like with a Spanish accent. Oh yeah, yes, like, George yeah. Martin. Um, Martin. Yeah, like like he was funny. He was a funny actor, and he he had a lot of funny scenes and everything. And you know, he didn't move on to the sequels or anything either. But like like even though like those. Yeah those smaller guys, I, I mean, Lieutenant Harris, the Lieutenant at the time, um, is just hilarious. And like, everybody's so, it was perfect casting. I, I, I you yeah. couldn't cast it any better. Like it was. So- oh, the, the, the little double acts within the, the, like, like say Proctor and Harris and, you know, um, like Hooks and Hightower, Hooks and Hightower. Um, I only found out recently that one of the reasons that, um, that Bubba Smith didn't come back was out of support because they weren't going to bring her back for the, um, for another film. And he, he was like, well, I'm not coming back either. And I just yeah. thought that literally echoes what we saw in that first film. And it is oh, yeah. for, for a film that could be kind of a bit like Porky's or something like that. It, it's got heart. Right. I, I, I think it's very wholesome story. actually. It's the underdog story, you know, we're like, you know, like like mm. Rocky and Karate Kid and stuff like that. You know, it's like, you know, they kind of like become heroes at the end. Maybe that's um, why we keep going back to it. You know, maybe that's what we need to see. We need to see those things because it makes you feel better. Yes, it's that. But like you really do. I mean, if you like the movies, you fall in love with those characters. And then and then from that point on, it's kind of like for me no matter what they're doing in the sequels it's making me happy like i'm yeah. just smiling and I, and it's still funny it is still like, it yeah, is still I, funny i find so much joy in like just seeing them and and even by the fourth one when we lose like mahoney and zed and sweet chuck and all them like i am still like there like i am enjoying you know, especially Harrison Proctor chemistry that yeah. Oh, yeah. started in the fourth movie. Like that carries on in five and six, and I absolutely adore it. Yeah, um, they bounce off me, each other so well. Yeah, for me, like Harrison Proctor, like save five and six for me for a, a lot of different reasons. I mean, like, I mean, I, yeah. I love the other characters too. Uh, not so much Nick Lassard, but <laughs> but I do enjoy seeing like them in different locations like miami beach and and them you know their friendship you know they're a classic double like they're a classic kind of laurel and hardy or abbott and costello kind of feel to them you know um uh, certainly harris 
it has an idea of who he is that nobody else agrees with, nobody else sees, and Proctor isn't intelligent enough to th to know that he's wrong. <laughs> yeah, he's like a child. He's yeah, kind of, he's kind of a child. He's amazing. He's kind of following him around, and uh, I'll say it right now: Proctor is one of my favorite characters, like mm. in the franchise. Um, one of my favorite comedic characters. Yes. Probably in comedy. I, I just think he's hilarious. He he kills me. I, I just love Proctor. Um, oh, the, the 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 little moments that the interplay and the writing and what, I don't know how much is improvised. There's little things. You know, you say about saving certain films. There's a bit in six where they're inside. I think the mayor's office or they're inside mm -hmm. the commissioner's office, and the cleaner comes and. Um, he, he, he finds a bra, so he puts the bra outside to like say, "Off yeah. you go," and pretends to be the commissioner. And he goes, "Thanks, Bob, Thanks, Bob. or whoever." Yeah, yeah. And, and then yeah, um, and Proctor, and yeah, and then Proctor goes, uh, "Yeah, thanks, Bob." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, that 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 whole that was the fifth one. The, that whole opening oh, sequence, fifth in one. the fifth yeah. movie, like yeah. I think is hysterical. Um, that's that's when what happens bring... when you watch them all back to back. <laughs> Yeah, you forget yeah. which one you watch. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're you're going backwards. So, <laughs> um, but so if I was gonna like rank them, um, it's kind of odd because a, a lot of people I know love the second movie. Um, I love it too, but I don't love it as much as one, three, and four. Um, right. There's something about when you watch the first one and then watch the second one and when the cast is like immediately cut down to like just six characters because they're getting the six characters to go, go over to the other precinct and help out, you know, like mm. the gang violence in the city and stuff. Um, there seems to be something like something something gets lost a little bit. No, I'd agree um, with that. It's a little bit darker, isn't it, as well? It, it, it's just darker because it's in the city and it's like a kind of danger. They're trying to show a bit of danger. But yeah. again, they are they feel more uprooted in that than, than when they go to other places in other installments for some reason. I don't know why that is. It, it, it almost feels like a late 70s, early 80s grittiness, like, you know, city mm -hmm. grittiness uh, to the second movie. Um I mean, the comedy is still hilarious and everything like that, but I, there's just something lacking. And there's moments, there's there's pieces, you know, because a lot of time it's like a, a collection of like goofy skits. Like, oh, mm. now now these characters are doing this thing, or like there's Jones doing the the thumping tire thing with his, uh, you know, guy he's partnered up with, and like you know, and that's funny. And, oh, yeah. oh yeah, you know. But then there's like other pieces in there that like where the jokes don't go anywhere like like there's one where like Fackler pulls up to a gas station and he's he goes up to the window and he's asking for key to the bathroom he has to use the bathroom and you know he gets like the big cement block with the key on it and you know and it's like was that the punchline like because that mm. that didn't go anywhere it's just like he just gets the cement block and then like they just cut to something else. And I'm just like, I'm like, that's weird. Cause there's usually there's like a payoff, you know, like with Fackler with where he, the guy is, has the, uh, the hood of the car open and he knocks that and he hits the guy behind them. And you know, like, yeah, yeah, like, that's, that's how you expect the scene to end with like something, you know, you know, Fackler is always causing, uh, accidents you know you get to the third and it, it brightens up and we become gradually more family friendly i guess as we go along um you could i can understand that the reason for that there's only seven i guess which is an outlier in the sense of it feels cheaply made made for tv made made for just getting it made the other ones were kind of reacting to the success yeah yeah, like um, like four is the peak, I think, of like absolutely. it being a big tentpole movie. Yeah, I, I I think because you know when it goes to three, three is my second favorite. You would think I would say four, but 
there's something about three that I love that it kind of goes back to the basics of the first one. There's a lot of like references back to the first one or like mm -hmm. callbacks and stuff. Um, I love that Zed and Sweet Chuck join the Academy. And yes. the only reason for Zed joining the Academy is he's reformed. He's on our side now. I'm like, that. that that's all the reason you yeah, needed for him. I'm happy with that. Yeah. You know, he should have been in prison for like 10 years or something. <laughs> But yeah, he's the, the villain become yeah, how strange like the main villain, the dangerous villain from that segment becomes one of the most beloved characters in the series. Yeah, yeah. Um <laughs> but it's funny, it's kind of like it's almost like they did the the Mahoney thing where it's like, well, Mahoney could have went to jail, but they put him in the academy yeah. and I guess I guess they were like, well, let's just do the same thing with Zed, just make him join the academy and see if it'll straighten him out. And what a what a mad performance that is and going back to it um, you know, it's strange to think of Bobcat Goldthwait's career as a director and stand-up and all the things that he's done. But this character, uh, you can tell he's throwing little things in at the end of scenes and they always land, they always work, especially with Sweet Chuck, obviously. But even when in the fourth one with his girlfriend, um, is it Christine Bohrer, and like she, she's funny, and but people just play off him so well. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what it is about great. that character. I love it. I love that yeah, character. She's great, and uh, yeah, when they're they're having that little walk and talk about where she's like, maybe if you, you know, spoke a little, <laughs> <laughs> you know, when they're talking about the way he talks, you know, he's very he's like, sweet. Oh, actually, it's a very structure. sweet character. Yeah, yeah, it's so funny. But I, I love the third movie and like all the callbacks and, you know, like Fackler's wife is joining up and. Um, Colleen Camp's brothers joining the, the the punching family, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, and it's like, uh, um, it's always a very, a very a very good like um, across the camera punch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I love I love how Tackleberry's been with with her, you know, since the second movie. And yeah. Even by the fourth movie, he's still shocked that this family beats the hell out of each other. Yeah, he's kind of sat there. And I'm like, why is he shocked? He's been living with them for like years now. <laughs> like, it's like, it's like normal. Yeah, um, what an interesting character to have a gun nut uh, who these days would be quite a controversial character, I guess. But he's actually really one of the sweetest characters, the most like um, childlike character. Yeah. It's a real juxtaposition and everybody loves him and he's fiercely loyal. Um, but he, he loves his guns, you know, he loves them like, like yeah, a toy. He, he's psychotic for guns. You know, I mean, a lot of the characters, when you look at them, like, you know, like like Jones and Tackleberry, like they should be in a psych ward. They're just they're they're living in their own world. Yeah. That, you know, it's like well, they, they, it's just like they could they just a little bit more craziness, and they would be locked up. You know. Yeah, like Jones is a character where you wouldn't be able to one of the reasons i think you wouldn't be able to make a police academy movie that had the same feel because he brings you know michael winslow brings so much to that character that nobody else can do in fact he is a completely unique performer there is nobody there was nobody who made their career by doing a, a vocal impression of Jimi hendrix like that just right. doesn't happen <laughs> it's insane yeah, no, he, he, he's I mean, it, it amazes me. I, I, uh, I, when I met Michael Winslow, I asked him like, like, how did they come up with some of these, um, scenes? Because would you just introduce like, oh, I could do like a flat tire thumping noise, and then they just, all right, let's go shoot a scene around that, you know? So he said it. They, they kind of worked hand in hand with the writer sometimes right to come That's up with scenes and, th and then i'm like in that sense is like a police academy script like 30 pages long and then like yeah. you're just kind of improvising the rest because i can't imagine yeah. what a, i would love to get my hands on a police academy script because yeah. half of the stuff like seems improvised that they were just coming up oh on a day-to-day -day oh, yeah. basis so zed like, and jones just, particularly i think yeah it, stand out just like you know, 30 pages of like, all right, these characters are doing this and they're at the shooting range and doing that. 
And then in the last 15 pages is like jewel thieves, you know, boat yeah. chase, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, just yeah, block that you know, out. And then, you know, cause that has to be like storyboarded out. And yeah, you know, that's a really good three, point. I think has, part three, I think is my favorite uh, climax to all the movies. Like, I think it's just exciting and the boat chase and, Obviously, in the first one, you want them to be able to continue what they're doing, and the same with the third one. And the second one, I'm not as invested in the in in what's what's happening to Lassard's brother, essentially. You're right. Um, and the fourth one, you know, it's cool because it's got balloons, and we've got like a <laughs> Brian Wilson stuff, and you know, all kinds of eighties. Like that's probably the best and and, and jukebox don't soundtrack. Of, don't forget the gang of ninjas. <laughs> oh yeah, of course. Because yes, because because we have to have ninjas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for for no reason. That's one of my favorite like throwaway lines where you see Callahan go, "There's a ninja now," and I'm like, "Why are there ninjas?" And there's like a like a suburban city neighborhood, you know, and they're and they're yeah. fighting on a boat. It's like, what? This makes no sense. It's hilarious. <laughs> That's so funny. It's, it's so funny. Yeah, we just accepted that it, it, 80s ninjas. Yeah, that's yeah. it. They're everywhere. Nin, yeah. Ninjas were everywhere. American ninjas. Yeah. 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 It's um, it, it's interesting to kind of look at them. Obviously, the time that they were made, but they are they are pretty timeless in that sense. They're a nice. There's nothing in there that is too um jarring with modern sensibilities or anything. I just think it, they're very wholesome. And fun. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I feel like, and I, I think there was a good thing that they became PG mm. uh, from the third one on because it did kind of open it up to like, you know, family friendly films kind of, you know, like, I mean, there's moments that are just like, well, this probably is a PG 13 moment. Like yeah. Proctor making, making out with the hooker and then running around naked and, winds up with the blue oyster or whatever and it's just like well, yeah the blue oyster the the recurring character <laughs> yeah but it's funny that you said that because you know i had the marathon on this past saturday which was the actual 40th anniversary of the you know the first police academy movie in theaters mm -hmm. so i said i'm like all right we're gonna do all you know seven movies i had a bunch of friends come by um and you know most of them stayed for most of them <laughs> uh and my friend eric he brought his 16 year old daughter along she was laughing and she thought it was like we they stayed for the first two movies and it almost seemed like she wanted to watch more like she was i'm like oh my god oh, this is cool. like generational now like a 16 year old girl like who at first was just on her phone and kind of you know, double screening, you know, just looking up yeah. once in a while, laughing at something and then going back to her phone. But after a while, she started like putting down the phone and watching it. And she thought what she was seeing was hilarious. And I'm like, this is something that's, that's awesome. 40 years old. This is, you know, what, 34 years older than her you know like like and it still holds <laughs> up like this type of comedy um that's I awesome mean, man the stuff with uh lassard at the podium and mahoney and the hooker and everything like yeah. she was cracking up at his face expressions and found mahoney funny and it, all the characters she was just she yeah. was pretty much laughing at so much of it and then when the second one came came on we we're like oh you're gonna see a character i'm talking about bobcat you know, we're like, yeah, you, you're, you're, you're going to find it interesting the way he speaks. <laughs> so. <laughs> I just want to mention uh, George Gaines. I've been doing a, a bit of research into his life and what a fascinating life he had. Um, oh, yeah. But the, the the guy, it made me think very much of like Lloyd Bridges and in Airplane and Leslie Nielsen. And it, it's on that level, his performance. You have, yeah. a, I know you mentioned earlier on some of your, your favorite um characters but i I'm, I'm i don't know i find it really hard i don't know if i do maybe when i was a kid it was probably jones i absolutely love commandant lassard um he is the heart of the movie i feel like of all the mm -hmm. movies um there's even moments in like the fifth movie where like he's kind of being forced to retire you know like that was the whole yeah 
kind of subplot with that that where where like he's looking at the giant poster of himself at the uh the police convention in uh miami and like and then there's, there's moments that are like oh my god there's that heart from like the first movie again where you yeah. know where like he kind of turns back and looks at it and he was like sad that he was like being forced to retire and i'm like oh my god it's like we had like yeah. like you know balls out stupidity for the third and fourth movie and then like we brought heart back for just moments in the fifth movie yeah with him thinking it was like a demonstration like him yes. being kidnapped yeah and hostage. you know like i i love that i think that's hysterical. yeah the, the characters really care about him and that's that's where a lot of the heart comes they really want to do well for him like they whether intentionally or unintentionally or he, he's given them purpose and they they love him it's like a very much like a father figure um and also they're quite protective of him there isn't often sweetness in films when we move towards the sort of the um, you know, Farrelly brothers and, and gross out comedies and things like that. Sometimes we forgot care about the embarrassment that a character might be going through. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. There, there's, there's definitely that fatherly figure. Like, like he believed in them and they believed in, they believe in him. And that's mm. great. That definitely gets lost in that mission of Moscow movie. Um, yeah. Because it's yeah. like, they don't seem at all concerned about where he is. They just think he's in the room. Like, yeah, it's you know, very I'm disconnected. Like, I'm like, no, they would be way more suspicious on like where the hell is Lassard, yeah, and exactly. then you know, instead of going on the stupid, you know, stupid crap that they go on, I'm like, I'm like they would have busted <laughs> down that door. Tackleberry would have like. Yeah kick down yeah. that door i get the joke set up that like you know he's not part of the plot at all until the very end and then he takes down ron perlman mm. but it's like it's like eh, this doesn't fit with no. what the characters became throughout the rest of the movies when i was watching um a couple of pictures and maybe even a little clip of um zed and Sweet Chuck now are the two actors, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, for the um, the upcoming documentary, there was a picture of them both sat next to each other, and I was watching Seven as it came on, as, as it came on my phone. I was double screening, as you would say, <laughs> um, yeah, and, I, and I was like, "Oh, this film misses these characters." <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh my God! Imagine Zed and Sweet Chuck in Russia. It feels yeah. like things are starting to move now with it. Um, what, what do you know about what, what, where it, where are they with that? Um, it's definitely coming out this year, as per one of the producers. Um, I contacted because I figured we would talk about this, but I contacted two of the producers uh, and asked them, "Hey, is there any chance this is going to come out?" Like anytime soon like you know the summer or, or the whatever. 40th like, anniversary and so yeah. one of the producers didn't answer me at all um he he answered a different question and i'm like ah. well thanks i hope it comes out soon and then the other guy said that it should be like later on this year probably the fall time fingers crossed um you, you know yeah, it the come um out this year i mean it's the 40th anniversary uh it's been over six years that they've been working on this doc. Uh, I know they had to get a lot of interviews that, um, you know, that it, it, they were trying to get interviews during the pandemic time and mm. uh, things were difficult then. And, but like, they, they also like do like all these horror documentaries because the fan base for police Academy isn't as great as say, the RoboCop documentary, RoboDoc. That really did become a monster, didn't it? It became huge in terms of the yeah. amount of people involved. It's kind of like they don't finish a documentary. They don't finish a doc until, like, like they're, they're always, like, working on multiple things. 
you know, they more power to them, like because yeah. all their docs so far have been really good. I'm, I'm, I'm sure it will be. I'm sure the doc is going to be amazing when it comes out, and I'm so happy. My name's still going to be in the, you know, co-executive producer credit, and but um, yeah. but their docs are great. They're like Pennywise was great, and um, mm. I, they did the the I think they did the the Robert England. Oh, okay, I just started watching that. Really good. Right. Like as a as a massive fan, I'm like I'm dying to see that one. You know. Um, yeah, I think there are a lot of people. I think it's having a bit of a resurgence as well. I think people are going back to it more at the moment, mainly because they just. I, I think we need more films like that. That, like you say, make you smile from ear to ear when you watch them all the way through. We need that more yeah. than ever. I mean, I'm definitely gonna plow through the cartoon series, but. I really wish I could find the whole twenty six yeah. episodes or whatever it is of the TV show. And I'd like that. I, I, I'm jealous of you having a Z now. I want to go. I'm going to go on eBay as soon as we finish. Yeah. Um, Check this out. I got. I got this for twenty dollars at a place in Pennsylvania. It's Tackleberry. Oh wow! And a crash site. You know, a crash site. You hit the button. And he flies through. But he has all of his oh, weapons. Wow. And it's chunky as well. It's a big. It's a big boy. That. Yeah. <laughs> 20 bucks i was like uh i'll take two um, come on yeah <laughs> wow that is cool but, that um, is really cool i can i know some people who would love who would who would um yeah crawl over broken glass to get those um <laughs> very quickly uh victim of all part two uh where are you on in the process with that I, i've been following it closely but for people who know the film and know your face from when we talked last time and, and discussed um part one um, yeah, well, first off, speaking of Victim No More, Victim No More is a Friday 13th tribute film or fan film. Um, and it's Friday 13th is my favorite horror movie franchise. And Police Academy is my favorite comedy franchise. So, naturally, I have to incorporate Police Academy things into Victim No More, which I believe I told you about. I think so, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, like in the first scene, the main character's wearing a blue oyster t shirt. Of course. Yeah, I remember now. Yeah. Um and you can't really see him see it that well, but the back of his car while he's driving around has police academy stickers. So there's like there's a connection with police academy awesome. there. And then you find out at the end of the movie that his last name is Mahoney. So <laughs> could this be the child of Carrie Mahoney and Trish Jarvis. That is wow. Really, completely different types of movies. But um, I'll I'll show you something really funny. Um, and here is Carrie Mahoney and Trish Jarvis. Ah. Steve Gutenberg and Kimberly Beck from Friday the Thirteenth Part. It's Four. all starting to come together. <laughs> I think this is my character's parents. I'm not sure, but <laughs> wow, that is um, cool. She sent that to me when she ran into Gutenberg by her house. That's but, so um, good. But I'm sure eventually, I'm, I I really plan on doing three Victim No More movies, and I'm sure the Police Academy references won't end. <laughs> no, <laughs> just no. The first one. I'm sure I'll slip <laughs> something in there. Uh, maybe even one of the actors from Police Academy movies. I'll that would be awesome. Find a way to like get in there. But um, yes, Loose Ends, Victim No More Part Two. I am currently working on the script. Um, I'm preparing to shoot a promo teaser trailer, which will be used to uh, for fundraising uh, September 13th when our campaign goes online. Awesome. Uh, so we'll have like a teaser trailer. So it's like, hey, if you like what you're seeing or you're curious, donate to the campaign. Uh, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. And and I appreciate so much that ranking video that you did with your your, your top five uh, Friday 13 fan films. And I, oh, I was, no, my it... mind was blown by uh, it being number one. That was great. No. I hope you like the sequels because, you know. I will. I hope there's many, many sequels. And many, and many. many. <laughs> I hope they're very, very good, but we shall see. Um, uh, and um, and once I set up my Citizens on Patrol uh, UK chapter, you'll be the first person I invite. Uh, thanks so much, Bob. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you a really so much. Great time. I had a blast.